Hey guys, Jason here, Traditional Bowling Wilderness Podcast. Today we're going to talk about your quiver and does it matter if you have it on or take it off? Does it affect your bow flight and some ways to do this the right way where it's not going to be an issue for you? But if you're like me and you like to shoot with a quiver on all the time, you're going to want to practice with one on all the time. Now we have a couple bows here and we're going to talk about it for a minute, but on mine, you notice that I never have my quiver off my bow. Anytime you see me shoot, I, I don't ever take it off. Quiver has been on my bow forever, and there's a reason for that. Not only does it change the way the bow feels in the hand as far as torque goes, okay, and twist. Sorry, you're going to hear the wind chimes a little bit back there. But it affects that, okay, that balance point of the bow gets affected by having a quiver on it versus not having a quiver. But also, once you mount a quiver on a bow... If you get outside of the fade outs, okay, of the riser, you can see here where the brown, dark brown comes in, okay, that's a non flexing part of the bow. But when we get out here, this is where the bow actually, the limb flexes. Same down here. When you get past here, the limb starts to flex. If your quiver attachment points like these get outside of here, you're going to start getting, that's going to start. Uh, affecting the flex of your bow so that becomes an issue so you want to practice all the time with that quiver on there because it will change your arrow spine it will change the shooting dynamics of your bow it will change all of that stuff and like I said the way the bow feels in the hand and the way the weight hangs out and articulates that bow will all have an impact on you so it's very important that you shoot with a bow on your quiver all the time if you're going to hunt with a quiver on your bow all the time okay um so that's pretty vital and that's the reason i don't buy that extended quiver you know where the where it's two different bars and you can extend them out now keep in mind i shoot short arrows my arrows are only 27 inches from the throat of the knock to the back of the insert they're only 27 inches because i have a 25 and a half inch draw so i'm okay with that if i had a longer draw i would get that extended quiver but then that becomes more of an issue because now my grippers again get to be out here and they will affect because they are outside of those fade outs right there they will affect that uh, performance of that bow so there's a fine line on a long bow that you got to walk to make sure that you are going to have that attachment point where you want mine is purposely set like it is so that I have the attachment points inside of the riser so they're not affecting a working part of the limb but notice that mine is offset this one is higher or the whole quiver is shifted it's not centered around the grip see the gap distance here versus the gap distance here I do that on purpose you can also see the gap distance here versus the gap distance here on purpose I do that so that it gets this one out of my field of view so that when I shoot I don't have to look at that thing sitting right here so I purposely shift mine that way plus it gets the bottom of my arrows up higher onto the equation um, because you see where your attachment points are so it shifts it as high as I possibly can before I run out a fade out in working part of the limb here see so that's my purpose this is as far up as I can go and I put it that way on purpose for those reasons so that it all makes sense um, and it gets it out of my field of view and lets me shoot without having this strap set up be in my way so but that's the key thing here to understand on a longbow if especially on a longbow recurve you can get away with it more because of the riser size we'll show you in a minute on a longbow if you are going to hunt with a quiver on Always shoot and practice with a quiver on. Now, when we look at a couple of different recurves here, you will notice that all my bows, all my recurves that I have, they are basically set up for a quiver that is not going to affect the working limbs. Here we have a one-piece quiver. Okay, now if yours is a two-piece takedown with the bolt system, which I got some Samic Sages in there, you can put that like a rubber... Now here we have a Samic Sage, and you can see it's a takedown model bow. So we have, again... Like my quickie quiver, attachment points right here, like I put in my Martin Mamba. So we have those in there, too, that you can use. Come straight from the factory that way. You also have the stabilizer hole. But you could also strap a strap-on quiver, quiver right onto these limb points right here on the pockets and not affect anything. Or slide one on right up to this point. If you slide them right and tight to here... And right and tight to here, you're probably not going to get much effect out of that limb flex in there being an issue, and you're going to be okay. For example, here we have a uh, one of those adjustable bottles, quick, you know, that uh, Great Northern Quiver, but it's the two-bar adjustable, so it'll come in and out and adjust. If we were to put this quiver on this bow, hang on here, so we could put this something like this and have this spread out where it is again, the points are inside of the riser 
like that and we are going to be completely fine okay because we're not out here on the limbs uh, if we were to stretch this all the way out and be out here on these limb points you'd want to be as tight as you possibly could where you see my finger here to this limb pocket to prevent that but the beauty is that this one is set up to go on here like this so that it does not actually affect any of that working part of that limb which is a key thing you want to remember now if i were to put this on my longbow we grab this if I were to mount this, now this is a right-handed quiver on a left-handed bow, but if we were to put this on here, you can see the spacing differences just on how this quiver is set up. You can see that if we put that on there, we are almost outside of the working part. We're on the top, we're outside, to, or we're into the working part of the limb, and down here we're almost there. So you can see how spreading these points out can be more of an issue for you if they get too far past there and uh, so that's why I said I don't even bother with these style for myself uh, because my arrows are short and I, I don't need that I need to be inside of there so hopefully these little tips here make sense for you it's like a selway slide on or a strap on one right up on those fade outs right there right where that you know the limb meets there you're going to be okay Okay, it's not really that much of a working part of limb, but again, you will want to leave it on to practice all the time. This is my wife's bear, and you notice again the offset. The way, the way that quiver changes the dynamics of that bow, it changes, you feel it. But this one, we specifically got the bow with the attachment points in the riser so that I did not have to put anything on the working part of the limbs. So this is that Grayling quiver uh, and uh, um, just amazing quiver, absolutely incredible quiver. Um, and it's got the, uh, uh, the bolt points built right into the riser there. So it works perfect for her and it does not affect the flight of the arrow it does not affect the working part of the limb however it does still affect the balance point of that bow something to consider hang on let me get this next one little wind chime noise in the background now this is my first recurve i ever bought my barton mamba okay those ones there are kind of annoying those aren't bad i think tina's got like an obsession with wind chimes because they all have meaning to them and special phrases on them but they're definitely all over that corner um, <laughs> she's laughing at me in here. Um, but this is my Martin Mamba, the first recurve I ever got. I got this in 1993. And, um, you can see it's got stabilizer hole. Well, when I got this, I first put a quiver that bolted on here and here. And I immediately noticed it changed my spine and my arrow. So I did not like that. It was, a uh, I don't remember the make of the quiver that was on there back in the day, but it was not, it was not a Selway. But even a Selway or something like that on one of these, if you can jam those up right in nice and tight to here where you're out of the working part of the limb, you're good. Get it up in here nice and tight so it's not on a working part of the limb. I, however, took this to Starlight Archery back in the day in, in southern Michigan, and I had them put in two adapters right here, uh, two threaded inserts so that I could mount a quickie quiver on this bow with a bracket, you know, so I could pop it in. Because with this, I did not hunt with the quiver on the bow very much. So I could put the quickie quiver on, I had the bracket on there, put the quickie quiver on and leave it on there all the time. Um, you know, when I was walking in and out of the woods, when I got in a tree, pop the little red tab, pull it out and hang it in the tree next to me, put an arrow on my string. That's how I did it. But it made it where I did not have to leave a quiver on this bow, yet I could walk in and out of the woods with a quiver on this bow. So again, there's a lot of options and a lot of things to th think about. But the most important thing is that if you are going to have a quiver on your bow, when you hunt, practice all the time with that quiver on your bow. The other thing is if you are going to put a quiver on your bow, make sure to get the mounting points as far into the bow as you can into the riser away from the working part of the limb. If the quiver is in the working part of the limb, it's going to affect the performance of the bow, it's going to affect your arrow spine, it's going to affect your arrow's flight, it's going to affect a lot of different things. So it's very important that you, tr you try to get that as tight in there as you possibly can. Um, and don't think for a second that there's anything wrong with adding some bolts, some mounting points like you see these two that are on here. Many are, uh, many archery shops will do that for you. They got a press, they put it right in there. They got a special drill that goes in a certain way, then they pop them in there, glue them in. They, these have been in here, like I said, for over 30 years and never had had a problem and I shoot this bow every year um, and uh, so that's you know been fine and then same thing here like Bear did you know they got him right here the attachment point there and the attachment point there so that you can use this quiver on there so just some food for thought for you on setting up your quiver and, and the way you need to do it and the way you need to think about it when you're uh, going to be hunting thanks for watching